You are now on to our App of the Week segment. This is where we demonstrate an app showing you whether or not it has accessibility issues or not. Should you have an app that you would like us to feature on one of our episodes, feel free to send such an app to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. And now, here's this episode's App of the Week. Now we turn to our App of the Week section, and Warren demonstrates R-Scan. You might recall we had the developer Ratislav on episode 159 being featured, and this is his app. Hi. Warren Carr here for Blind Android Users Podcast, and for episode 161, this is demonstrating an app whose developer we had a couple of weeks ago, Rastislav Kish. This is the R scan, where the R stands for his first name, Rastislav. I'll be demonstrating this app today on my Pixel 8 Pro running Android 14 and TalkBack 14.1. I do want to mention here in passing that Rscan is a very simplistic app. In other words, it's just an app dedicated not for an OCR, but an app dedicated to finding what a product is. So that's all that it does. It's not like a scanning app where you have an OCR capability. That's not what it does. I am on my home screen now and will navigate to my scanning folder, find and tap on RScan. I'll now move to Folder, OCR, four or more OCR items. OCR folder, I'll tap Lookout. I do have three pages of OCR related uh, things here. And so I'll move to the third page where we'll encounter the RScan. Page two of three. Page three of three. I am now on the third page, and now we'll find and tap on R scan. R scan. Here's R scan. We tap. Allow R scan to take pictures and record video while using the app button. The first thing we heard is whether or not we would like to allow the R scan to take video and pictures, and is sitting by default on while using the app. Of course, if I'm going to be able to scan those QR codes and barcodes, I'll have to allow it. So while it's sitting on while using the app, I'll tap here to activate. R scan list. We are now in the main UI of the app. And the first thing you heard was list. Meaning, if I had scanned any barcodes or QR codes, those products would be here in the list found near the top of the screen. And I do want to mention here that this is not your traditional scanning app. In other words, when you go to take a picture or when you go to scan a product, I should say, you're not going to have a camera view where you see the product whose uh, barcode you're scanning. So, Keep that in mind. For example, if you have some site and can see uh, pictures and stuff like that, you're not going to see it. It's all black. So it's just an app intended for finding that QR code or barcode and telling you what the product is. Now, at the bottom of it, though, we have some four buttons, and I'll take you through those buttons. And I also want to mention that there's no such a thing as settings. As you can tell, very simplistic app. At the bottom, from the bottom left and going toward the right, here's the items that we encounter. At the very bottom left, we've got clear list button. We have clear list. So in other words, if you've scanned some things and you want to clear that list, you could tap on this to clear such list. To the right of that, use flashlight switch. Use the flashlight. So by default, it will turn on the flashlight if you happen to be in a place that is not well lit. The third item going right. Import from clipboard button. You could import um, those numbers or UPCs or whatever, and it will recognize it if you have something on your clipboard. Last item on the right. Export to clipboard button. You could tap here to export the result of a scanned product that you just finished and would like to export it and save it somewhere, whatever the case may be. In our interview with Rastislav, we talked a lot about food. We talked about 
chocolates and all of that. I do want to mention here, though, I'm not into chocolates. And so I do not have some chocolate or box of chocolates uh, to scan for you. However, I have my favorite, and that will be gummy bears. I got this one from Walmart. I'm going to reach for it and see if you'll recognize it. So like I said, this does not bib, and that's what I like about it. So if you point it at something and you don't hear a result uh, from it, then turn it around till you get it, because it's not going to bib until you find something. So here we go. I got these gummy bears. Point it. I don't hear anything. So I'm going to turn it. value gummy bears candy, 52 ounces, Walmart inventory checker. Showing item one Very one. quick. As, a, as soon as I turned it, it told me great value gummy bears, Walmart, uh, Walmart inventory checker, and that will show at the top of my screen. Great value gummy bears candy, 52 ounces, Walmart inventory checker. That's it. And if I tap on clear list, that clear button. list at the bottom, it is gone. Now, I haven't forgotten our furry friend, so I got something for the cat, and I want to look at what that is. Let's take a look and see what it will tell us the product is. It's not on this side, so I'm going to turn it around. Temptations Whiskers Mix Up Surfers Delight Cat Care and Treats 3 Ounces. Showing item there one we go. One. It says something about tempta Showing temptation one to two of whiskers. Two. So I'm going to put my finger near the top. Temptations whiskers mix up surfers delight cat care and treats three ounces. Two of two. That's it. Now, I'm going to clear or there's no need. I want to try something else that is not food related. And so I got a box of the microphone that I'm using here in recording this demonstration. I'll grab that box and scan it to see what brand this microphone that I'm using is. Of course, it has four sides, so I'm going to flip it over till it, till it gets it. Here's the first side. I don't hear anything. Here's the second side. I don't hear anything. Flip it over. Behringer 000E4J 0000010 Bigfoot USB Studio Condenser. Showing items 1 to 3 of 3. There we go. So it tells me that this is the Behringer um, Bigfoot USB Studio Microphone. And that's what this is. EN13. Behringer 000E4J 0000010 Bigfoot USB Studio Condenser, one of three. And that's it with our scan. And I do want to mention here in passing that it recognizes the U.S. measurements because it told us what the gummy bears were in ounces. This was something that Rastislav wasn't sure if it will recognize U.S. measurements or only the European. But as you can see, it recognizes the U.S. measurements. And that will be it about our scan, a very simplistic tool that you can use around the house recognizing those products. Again, I really like this app. I must confess, I've not got around to having a play with this yet. Has anyone else aside from Warren? I, I did actually, and to to give my opinion, uh, first of all, the the special thing or the advantage of the app is the use of search, which means that uh, sometimes the other apps will not get a code because it's a local code, and you will be getting it via the search of the app. Uh, so this means that it's sometimes able to identify uh, codes that seeing AI, for example, can't identify. Uh, this is the advantage of about it. However, because it's uses search, this means also that there's a disadvantage, which is that sometimes the search will, uh, or the result that will be that it will be getting will be wrong. So it will it will take the the wrong search result. And uh, this will mean that this is a misidentification. So people should be aware about that because uh, it's something that might happen. It happened with me, and actually, the the product was a Nescafe product, uh, Nescafe. Uh, and despite that, Nescafe is very famous. 
it was misidentified because it's using a search, not a, da a code database. And uh, other than that, it's good in recognition. I mean, it's uh, qu quick, but you know, for me, because there is no uh, like no way to know that you're close to the code or that a portion of the code is uh, detected. It's like seeing AI does a better job in this regard. Well, I think for me, I, I really like the app because it's very simplistic, as I indicated in my demo. And uh, what I like about it, see, I don't like noises. And anytime you hear that thing make noise, uh, the beep, it has found your cord. I don't want to, you know, while it's looking for the code uh, and I, I, I'm hearing all these beeps, it, it, I find it very annoying. So I really like that app. And very simple app, very simple tool, very little in size. I think it's what, maybe like 12 MB or something like that. Um, it's just a basic, it's not an OCR package. It's not uh, something that you're actually gonna see a picture of what you're um, trying to get uh, recognition for. And so it's just a different take. Um, I, I, I would use this anytime around the house to find stuff like, especially in the pantry, trying to grab some food out of there. Uh, it's very useful for me. I actually used it last night in prepping some food, it, and it worked f fantastically. So I like it. If you like a simple tool, uh, I think this is it. But, you know, like I always said, it's good to have uh, more than one thing because if something doesn't do it, you have another one. So it's another tool in that toolbox that you need. The other thing about those beepy noises as well from uh, some of the other AI apps is that they'll they'll do false positives. So it sounds like you're getting warmer and actually there is no barcode on that side of whatever it is you're scanning. I've had that with, uh, I'm not actually, it's either in vision or seeing AI, I can't remember which, but um, it'll, it'll get faster, the beeps, as if I'm getting closer to the barcode and I can't find it and it transpires there is no barcode there. So the, yeah, um, that's that. Yeah, uh, yeah, say the, um, the the false positives where it thinks there's a barcode and actually there isn't is a bit disconcerting. Um, but no, it's good, and, and it, it'll it'll obviously search for me. It might be a second line app if if, if the app that has access to a database has failed, then maybe I go to that one. Uh, but I'm definitely going to install it and give it a look. And you know what I like what? is the fact that. Um, it recognizes stuff here in our metric system because that was the one thing he was afraid of. He thought it might not work here in the States and in the UK. So, Ed, you could try it there in the UK and see if it works for you. But uh, it does work for me here, giving me the yeah. right, correct uh, measurements. And that's what I like about it. Yeah, uh, I, I want to ask Warren if he if he mentioned the fact that there is a slight accessibility issue, which is related to the state of the flashlight. So when you tap the flashlight uh, to turn it either on or off, it will not give you an um, indication that uh, or about the state. If you are using G Show, this this was mentioned actually in our review on accessible Android. Uh, if you are using G Show, it will uh, show you the state or let you know the state via the button itself because it says checked or unchecked. However, with TalkBack, it doesn't say anything. So you can't know at all if the flash is on or off if you are not having sight to, to verify this yourself. When I did mine, if the room is well lit, because I can see some, and but the flash was not on. Uh, but if the room is dim, it's not well lit, it would come on. I, I'll have to try that to see uh, what happens. But by default, you know, there, there's, to... there is no auto flash, Warren. There is no auto flash as far as I know. There is only the button. But the problem is that the state will not be reported. So if you tap the button, you will not be knowing if you're turning off or on the flash. Well, that's something we need to tell Ras about. I'll look into it and then I'll reach out to him because I think that could be easily correctable. Yeah, I think one of you should carry the torch for the flashlight accessibility button. Yeah.